إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده لا فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed, the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah. وَخَيْرُ الْهَدِي هَدِيُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ And the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ وَشَرُّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا And the worst of affairs. The worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours. وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ And everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation. وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ And every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And every going astray and every misguidance is in the hellfire. ثُمَّ أَمَّا بَعْدٍ <coughs> My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this year, Hajj, comes upon us and a time where instead of being able to see three or four million hujjaj pilgrims going to Mecca to the sacred precincts of the haram to make tawaf and to make their sa'i to make their hajj that once in a lifetime trip we're hearing that the numbers that are going to be allowed is just a thousand because of the ta'un because of this plague that we are being plagued with so first let us seek refuge with Allah. Allahumma inna na'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-junoon wal-judhami wa min sayyi' al-asqam. That we seek refuge with Allah from leprosy and madness, from degenerative diseases and from all evils and all, sickness, all evil harm uh, and sickness. What I do generally on this khutbah preceding the days of hajj, where the, the, the rites are carried out, is we discuss this journey to hajj. And I wanted you to put yourself in a mode and listen attentively to this journey I'm about to describe, to, about to paint. For those who have treaded upon it, it's going to make us feel so sad that we're not there this year. And for those who have not gone and made hajj yet, then inshallah you will go and plan that if, bi ta'ala, with Allah's permission next year, things are back to being okay and normal, that you will go next year to make that hajj. It will make you die to go on this journey. Hajj is an obligation once in our lifetime. From the five arkan that Islam is built upon and a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fihi ayatun bayyinatun maqamu Ibrahim wa man dakhalahu kana aminan wa lillahi ala nasi hijjul bayt man istata'a ilayhi sabila wa man kafara fa inna allaha ghaniyun anil alameen. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, what means in it are clear signs, such as the standing place of Ibrahim, of Prophet Abraham alayhi salam, and whoever enters it shall be safe. And do to Allah something we owe Allah if we're physically fit and physically we have the we have the money and we're capable of going. And do to Allah from the people is a pilgrimage to the house for whoever is able to find the way there too. But whoever disbelieves, then indeed Allah is free from need of all the world of all the worlds. It starts out by shifting your life once you make that niyyah that you're going to Hajj and you you get your passport ready and you get all those things ready. You shift your life to a mode and a way that you should already have been living in. As a reminder, because now you know you're going on this sacred jersey so journey. So now you're going back to that way you should be living. 
a way of humility, a life of humility, a life of simplicity, a life of humbleness. And this we find in the hadith as a reminder, narrated from Mujahid, the Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. He said, قَالَ أَخَذَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ بِمَنْ كِبِي فَقَالَ كُنْ فِي الدُّنْيَا كَأَنَّكَ غَرِيبٌ أَوْ عَابِرُ سَبِيلٌ وكان ابن عمر يقول إذا أمسيت فلا تنتظر الصباح وإذا أصبحت فلا تنتظر المساء وخذ من صحتك لمرضك ومن حياتك لموتك This hadith my brothers and sisters in Islam that we find in Sahih al-Bukhari The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he, uh, Ibn Umar he said Allah's Messenger وسلم, took a hold of my shoulder and said be in this world as if you're a stranger or a traveler Live in this world as if you're a stranger or a traveler, meaning don't put all your eggs in the basket of this dunya. A traveler, they don't take all their belongings. They only take what they need because they know that they're going to reach a final destination and return home. That home for us should be Jannah. A stranger is always cautious of his or her surroundings. They never get too comfortable. It's not about leisure. It's not about yani, being settled because they know that Things are strange to them And they're a stranger This is how you should live this life Not tying yourself to the material world Of this dunya And the sub-narrator he added that Ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah He used to say If you survive till the evening Do not expect to be alive in the morning And if you survive till the morning Do not expect to be alive until the evening And take from your health for your sickness And take from your life for your death A reminder of what Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma He used to say That we never know when our last day is You could be young or old Look, Allah is trying to wake us up with this virus specifically Allah is trying to wake us up You could be young, you could be old You could be healthy, you could be sick You could be strong, you could be weak You could be rich, you could be poor You can be smart and educated, you could be illiterate It don't matter When it's written for you to go, you're gonna go So while you're alive Use your health To do good and work in the way of Allah And earn His pleasure While you're alive Work towards Allah's way before death overcomes you So you embark now on this journey of Hajj as a traveler with a little provision. You don't take your whole house. You don't take all your jewelry. You don't take all your possessions, even your prized ones. You don't take that stuff with you. You leave behind all your family and your friends. You only take a few belongings. You bid assalamu alaikum to them, not knowing really if you'll ever see them again or if they'll see you again. But you're doing this journey solely for the face of Allah To earn His pleasure To get that Hajj Mabrur Why? Why? Why do we all want that? That Hajj Mabrur, that accepted Hajj Because of what's promised Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu He narrates that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Man hajj hadha al-bayt Falam yarfuth Walam yafsuq Raj'a ka yawma waladathu ummu Rawahu al-Bakhari Allah's Messenger وسلم, he said, whoever performs hajj to this house, to the Kaaba, and does not approach his or her spouse for intimate relations, and does not commit sins while performing hajj, they're calm, they know what they're there for. Someone could push them, they're going to smile back. Someone could steal from them, they're going to let them go. They're not there to argue, they're only there to make hajj and not commit sin. Then this person will come out sinless, as a newborn child Sinless like the day Someone was born to their mother With no sin This is what the Hajj Mabrur Will get you as a reward وَقَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, Also in this hadith from Abu Huraira In Sahih al-Bukhari الْعُمْرَةُ إِلَى الْعُمْرَةِ كَفَّارَةٌ لِمَا بَيْنِهُمَا وَالْحَجُّ الْمَبْرُورِ لَيْسَ لَهُ جَزَاءٌ إِلَّا الْجَنَّةِ Allah's Messenger وسلم, he said in this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, the performance of Umrah is an expiation for the sins committed between the previous Umrah. So between every Umrah that you do, the sins between them, they are forgiven. And the Hajj Mabrur, the reward for the accepted Hajj, is nothing except for paradise. So you leave off on this journey, dying, 
to please Allah and have an accepted hajj so that all of the sins and stuff we accumulated through this time, Allah will forgive. And Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the faithful believers, she said, I asked Allah's messenger, I said to him, O oh Allah's messenger, وسلم, we consider that jihad is the best of deeds. And again, we clarify that this doesn't mean that you go and you do what these evil groups who claim to be upon Islam or upon the right manhaj, those ones like Al-Qaeda and ISIS, we seek total a separation from them. Islam is free of their evil and their terrorism and the likes of this. This is not jihad. This is foolishness. This is evil. This is a path of the devil that they are upon those evil groups. But Allah's messenger was asked, we consider that to be the best of deed. If you're being attacked for your home or fought for your religion, then you can fight back. This is of the best of deeds. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, لَكِنْ أَفْضَلُ الْجِهَادِ حَجْ مَبْرُورِ Bukhari For the women, the best struggle, the best jihad, the best battle for them is to make an accepted hajj. So this is what you are going for, to cleanse your sins and to please your Lord. So you go forth, pure intention in your heart, wanting Allah's pleasure. لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ It's meaning, here I am, O Allah, here I am, here I am, you have no partner, I only worship you, here I am. Verily all praise and all blessings are yours, and all sovereignty, all ownership of the heavens and the earth, everything is for you, you have no partner. You go forth, the intention is your heart, and you start saying this once you've taken on the ihram. And you've begun at the miqat to enter into that state where certain things are forbidden for you. You are there at the call, at the service of Allah. Testifying to Tawheed, the oneness of Allah, that He's the only one we worship alone without partners. Testifying that He's the Lord, has complete sovereignty over the heavens and the earth. And you're going now to make that hajj. You're in the state now of ihram. And you enter a state where certain things are prohibited. As a one who is in a state of ihram, they can't cut their nails. They can't cut their hair or their skin. They can't use perfumes. They can't wear clothing that is fitted to the body like a t-shirt or pants. The men, they adorn themselves with two white sheets. An izar and a rida. An izar and a rida. Two white sheets to cover their lower body and their upper body. No Gucci, no Armani, no hill figure, no whatever else you want. Just two plain sheets or white towels. You can't tell the rich from the poor no more. Humbled before Allah. Humbled before Allah. The women are free to wear what they can normally wear. So it's the 8th of Dhul Hijjah. The 8th of the month of Dhul Hijjah. And you leave from where you're at. Again, you have showered, taken a bath. You get into your state, your your clothing of ihram, and you enter the state of ihram, and you start saying the talbiyah. You go out to Mina on the eighth of Dhul Hijjah, saying the talbiyah. La baik Allahumma la baik la baik la sharika lak la baik inna alhamda wa nigmata lak wa almulk la sharika lak. You go there, and you're staying in tents. In in tents. There's like areas where there's just everyone, every group has a big tent and you stay in there. And you pray dhuhr and asr, shortened, but you do not combine them. And you pray maghrib and isha, again, you're shortening them, but you do not combine them. This is yawm at It means the day to quench thirst. Traditionally, the pilgrims, they used to fill their water in Mecca and set out for this first day of this journey of hajj. So they go and they do this with the prayers, shortening them. Why? Because it is what Allah and His Messenger وسلم, legislated. Saying, take from me your hajj rights. Take from me your hajj rights. So now everything we're doing was because the Prophet وسلم, did it himself when he performed hajj. So you sleep there in Mina. And if Allah wills, you wake up and it's the ninth of Dhul Hijjah. 
the blessed day of Arafah, one of the greatest days, Al Hajj Arafah, Hajj is Arafah. You must enter that valley at one portion and be there at least until the evening time or until sun sets. While in Arafah, before you head out from it, the blessed day of Arafah, you head there on that ninth day. It's a wide valley, a major day. Again, Al Hajj Arafah, Hajj is Arafah, as the Prophet ﷺ said. While you're standing in a scene like what has been described will be the scene of the day of judgment. Millions of pilgrims, millions of hajjaj pleading to Allah for forgiveness, for mercy, for admittance into Jannah, crying, begging Allah, pleading with Allah to forgive them their sins and return them like the day they were born to their mother. It was narrated from Aisha radiallahu anha that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا مِنْ يَوْمٍ أَكْثَرَ مِنْ أَنْ يَعْتِقَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِيهِ عَبْدًا أَوْ أَمَةً مِنْ مِنَ النَّارِ مِنْ يَوْمِ عَرَفَةٍ إِنَّهُ لَيَدْنُ ثُمَّ يُبَاهِ بِهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَيَقُولُ مَا أَرَادَ هَؤُلَاءِ There is no this hadith translated in, in the Sunnah of Nasa'i and it is Sahih. The Prophet ﷺ said, "There is no day on which Allah, the Mighty and the Sublime, He frees more of His slaves, male and female, from the fire." Then on the day of Arafah, he comes close and he boasts to the angels about them, saying, what do these people who have left their belongings, who have left their families, who have left their loved ones, who have left their comfort, who have left their uh, fine things in their life, what do these people want? And it appears here يعني, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is boasting يعني, to the angels, although Allah knows better than them. Just showing the angels who have no free will. Look what these slaves of mine who have free will and could have been indulging and following their desires and their lusts. Look at, look at them. What do these people want? Tears flowing. People worried for these few hours. Thinking about the day. The day which is 50,000 years long. The day of resurrection. The day of judgment. Everyone concerned about themselves. Just wanting to please their Lord. You're only there for a few hours. And if it's really trafficking and things take long, you may only be there for an hour or half an hour. But that is your concern. For once in your life, your concern is not the dunya. It's not how much money you're making today. It's not about what's going to be for dinner. It's not about when will I go, where will I go on vacation or when I will see this person. Your concern literally that day is getting your hajj accepted and you being forgiven for your sins. For the once, for the one time in our dunya, the best thing one can say that day, according to the authentic hadith, لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. So Maghrib comes and the sun sets. It's still the ninth day. Okay, Maghrib comes and it sets. The day of Arafah, the sun has set upon it. It's the evening time now, and only then. Can you leave Arafah? Once you've been in Arafah and it has had some portion of after sunset or what we call nighttime. And you head to Muzdalifa, an, opus, an open piece of land. Ain't no Sealy mattresses there. No posturepedics, no pillow top mattress. Most likely you don't have a pillow uh, of any kind. It's just you on the ground. A sleeping bag, maybe. Maybe a, a mattress that rolls up that you might have purchased. But you still feel the pebbles and the rocks underneath you. It's so crowded that sometimes the feet of the opposite gender is at your head. Your roof is now not an insulated home. Your roof is the sky and the stars that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created. Not some insulated ceiling with air conditioning and heating ducts. A sky that's above you. That Allah rose up بغير amadin. Without any pillars, Allah fashioned that. Allah الذي رفع السماوات بغير عمد ترونها ثم استوى على العرش وسخر الشمس والقمر كل يجري لأجل مسمى يدبر الأمر يفصل الآيات لعلكم بلقاء ربكم توقنون. Allah says in Surah al Ra'd, what means it is Allah who erected the heavens without pillars that you can see.
Then he established himself above the throne and made subject the sun and the moon, each running its course for a specific term. He arranges each matter and he, detail, he details the signs that you may of the meeting with your Lord be certain of. So you sleep in Muzdalafah after praying Maghrib and Isha and you wake up at Fajr. So once you get to Muzdalafah, you combine Maghrib and Isha and you wake up and it's Fajr time if Allah wills and you pray Fajr in Muzdalafah. Some who are elderly or um, if the, the females, especially if it's crowded, if they want to leave after the middle of the night, there's a permission for them to do so. Regardless, you pray Fajr in Muzdalafah for most of the people and it's the best day of the year. The 10th of Dhul Hijjah, Yawm al Nahr, the day of sacrifice, the best day of the whole year for us Muslims. You head to Mina, you pick up seven stones and you go to Jamrat al Aqaba, you go to the Jamrat al Aqaba is the largest of the three pillars that you're going to be stoning. The largest of the three, that's the only one that you will stone on the 10th of Dhul Hijjah. Why do you stone it? There's no proof that the Jamarat is shaitan or the devils. So why do we stone them? Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, خُذُ عَنِّي مَنَاسِكَكُمْ He said, take from me your hajj rights. I want to reflect for a second on this moment, on this for a moment. Isn't it enough for us to do something just because our Prophet ﷺ did it? Or do we think we always need to intellectually understand why? Or we always need to know the reason behind it or why we do it. And if it doesn't make sense, then we don't accept it. Let us reflect on this. We are Muslim, ya akhwani wa akhwati fillah. And we do and we obey so that we respond to Allah as inhabitants of Jannah to His call. Because if we obey Allah in this life and we follow Allah and we follow His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we will inshallah be from the inhabitants of paradise and there will be a day where you think you've gotten every reward possible and it will be called Yom Al-Mazid and Allah will come and call to the people of Jannah Allah will call Aina ibad al-ladheena a'ta'uni bil-ghaybi wa lam yarawni Aina ibad al-ladheena a'ta'uni bil-ghaybi wa lam yarawni Where are my servants? who worshipped me and obeyed me, who did as I commanded and stayed away from what I forbade without having seen me. They did this in the ghayb, meaning yani, not having seen me. Where are those servants? We do things because Allah and His Messenger وسلم, commanded it. And we don't have to know the reason why always. And we shouldn't do anything we don't have a proof for. People see this and make that change. Uh, I'm saying to please see this and make the change in your life instead of constantly trying to argue with the deen or with the proofs from those better than us, the companions. Instead of trying to find a fatwa that suits your fancy or your desires or your whims or your, it, it agrees with your intellect. Instead of doing that, go back to the pure sources and follow the deen that Allah revealed to His Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu as lived and implemented by the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the Tabi'at Tabi'een, the three best companions, the three best generations of this Ummah. This obedience to the Sunnah will earn you Allah's love. قال الله قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم. Allah says what means say O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you should love Allah, then follow me. So Allah will love you and forgive you your sins and Allah's forgiving and most merciful. So you see my brothers and sisters in Islam, in following the sunnah of our Prophet Wasallam, you will earn the love of Allah and you will earn forgiveness of your sins. Stop trying to fight it. Stop trying to say, well, it has to agree with my culture. Stop trying to say that it has to be uh, yani, the way I've been doing things all my life. I need to find the justification for it. Wake up and smell the coffee. Follow the deen as it was revealed. So you stone on that tenth of the Hijjah, Jamrat al Aqaba. And then you stop saying, La baik Allahumma la baik, la baik la sharika lak, la baik, inna al hamda wa al ni'mata lak, wa al mulk la sharika lak. You stop it at this time. 
Shamrat al Aqaba again is the largest of the of the the pillars, and the the last of them. It's considered the large one, and you start then saying takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd. You'll start saying this all the way until the sun sets on the thirteenth of Dhul Hijjah. Again, this is Yom Al-Nahar, the day of sacrifice, the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, the best day of the year. The men, they shave their heads. The sisters, they trim their hair a fingertip length. An animal is sacrificed for Allah to sacrifice commemorating the sacrifice of our father Ibrahim salam. What he did to Aram before it came as a replacement for him, sacrificing his son Ismail as a test that he had passed putting his son on his side, ready to sacrifice him per Allah's command. And when Allah saw him passing the test, he said it was only a test and you can replace it with a ram and the ram was sacrificed. So an animal, a sheep or a goat or seven sharing in a cow or a camel is sacrificed as gratitude and thanks to Allah and to get closer to Allah. For the hajjaj, this is called the hadi. Then you head to the Kaaba. Where a salah in that masjid is better than a prayer in any other masjid Times 100,000 So 100,000 times worth One prayer in Mecca is 100,000 times worth a prayer anywhere else in the world And you make tawaf around the Kaaba You go around it seven times The first house built for the worship of Allah alone without partners Seven times glorifying Allah and between Rukun al Yamani and Rukun al Hajar al Hajar al Aswad, and between the corner, the Yemeni corner, and the Black Stone corner, you say, "Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana." O oh, my Lord, O oh, our Lord, grant us good in this life. Wa fil akhirati hasana, and grant us good in the next life. Wa qina adab al nar, and save us from the torment of the fire. After you go around it seven times, you pass the black stone each time, saying Allahu Akbar while pointing to it if you cannot kiss it or touch it. Knowing that kissing it is not obligatory. And it is done if it's done, if you get that chance to do it. It's only done because the Prophet ﷺ did it, not for anything else. Then, after that tawaf is done and you've done seven rounds, you go and you pray two rak'ahs behind Maqam Ibrahim. You go and you pray to rak'ahs behind the station of Ibrahim. Allah says, وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنًا وَاتَّخِذُوا مِنْ مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمُ مُصَلَّى And Allah says what means, and mention when we made the house a place of return for the people, and a place of security, and take, O believers, from the standing place of Ibrahim, from Maqam Ibrahim, a place of prayer. So you go behind Maqam Ibrahim and you pray two rak'ahs, reading Qul Ya Ayyul Kafirun in the first rak'ah and Qul Hu Allahu Ahad in the second. Then you go and you drink some zamzam if you wish, some of the zamzam water, water still flowing from the time it spurted out of the ground as a mercy from Allah to Hajar, to the mother of Ismail alayhi salam wa alayhi salam so that he could have something to drink from. And for us, it is what it is drunk for. And in it is a healing. After this, you go to the Mount of As-Safa. You go to the Mount of As-Safa, where our mother Hajar, she began frantically searching for that water, searching for some nourishment, searching for any sign of life for her son and herself making 3.5 round trips or seven one-way circuits with men running between a specific area. Allah says, إِنَّ الصَّفَى وَالْمَرْوَةَ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبَيْتَ أَوْ اَعْتَمَرَ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَطَّوَّفَ بِهِمَا وَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah said what means indeed as safa and al marwa They're amongst the symbols of Allah. So whoever makes hajj to the house or performs an umrah, there is no blame upon him for walking between them. And whoever volunteers good, then indeed Allah is appreciative and knowing. So these, as-safa and al-marwa, two hills, 
these two hills, they are amongst the symbols of Allah. And the sa'i between them is from the rites of the hajj, from the monastic of hajj. After this long day where so many acts of ibadah are done, you head back to Mina, frequently saying lots and lots of takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillah alhamd. And you're going to stay there for the 11th and 12th days and nights and the 13th day leaving before sunset. On each of those days of Dhul Hijjah, the 13th, the, uh, Afwan, the 11th, 12th, and 13th, known as Ayyam Tashriq, the days of Tashriq, each of those days after Dhuhr, again, why after Dhuhr? Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Khudu anni manasikakum. It's because when our Prophet ﷺ did it, this is how we want to do it. You pick 21 stones, little pebbles the size of a chickpea. And you go out and you stone the three jamarat, seven for each one, saying Allahu Akbar with each throw. 21 total per day, because you're going to do the three pillars, seven for each one. And saying Allahu Akbar, magnifying Allah with each throw. Then you leave Mina to stone the jamarat on the 13th day before the sun sets. And you go to your dwelling place where you're staying. Until the day comes where you leave. And while many will be happy to go and hopefully see their loved ones feeling renewed, feeling like they've done a major once in a lifetime oblig obligatory journey, the sadness in your heart, will you see the Kaaba again? Will you be able to make tawaf again? Will you be able to pray behind Maqam Ibrahim again? Will you be able to make sa'i again? The day you leave, your last act of worship is to make tawaf one final time in your normal clothing. Seven circumambulations around the Kaaba. Tawaf al wada, The farewell tawaf. And directly after that, you are supposed to leave Mecca. And if Allah wills, you continue your journey or you return home. The chills of hearing this journey is enough for us to wish to have been there this year. And seeing it empty will definitely be a sight that will pain us all. But inshallah, Allah will rescue us from al bala wal waba, this these trials and these uh, plagues and all these hardships <clears throat> and allow us to return back to where we can worship him in his sacred home making tawaf and sa'i praying behind maqam Ibrahim and inshallah be able to make hajj next year subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk